Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Hope World. Well, we've had some nice, cool weather lately, haven't we? My goodness. I was talking to some friends in Virginia, and they got, they, when I was talking to them, it was 105 degrees up there yesterday afternoon. Mm. I said, well, it's about that bad down here. Anyway, we'll get through it. Any first time visit? First of all, Kurt, it's good to see you back with us, even though you got to come with all your paraphernalia and we can't touch you. We love you. We love you to death. Just good to see you back there. Any first time visitors here? I know I've seen some people that are uh, that are back. It's good to see Wendell and that family back over there in the, in the corner. Anybody else that's a first time visitor? All right. Um, we got the musicale today. We always look forward to that, and I know Flo and the, and, the, and the choir will, will do a great job, and we'll have fun joining in with them. Uh, something else very very important. Uh, we have our I have our young lady from uh, George Goddard, Becca Velasquez, and she's sitting right there. Raise your hand. This evening at 5:30, we're going to hear all about what she did on her mission trip in Uganda. It'll be right over here, and there will be. You can read about that below. And it tells you all about it, and uh, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. My wife's not here, so at least I'll have something to eat. The uh, all right, uh, SPRC they will meet at 6:30, I believe it is on the, on the first. That's on a Tuesday, 6:30, and we have World Communion Special Offering uh, Sunday the sixth. And uh, I said see below on that. That'll add to it. Then I'll do a couple, three more. 12:15 on the sixth. A call administration meeting, administrative meeting. You can read about that below. Then on Monday the seventh, the Lucy Harrington Circle will meet at 6:30, and the next Monday the 14th, the Methodist men will meet. I'll stop right there, and we'll get on the charge conference and the men church council and the fall picnic. That's that's way on down the road, and I don't think we need to put all that on the on you this morning. Are there any other special announcements? Becky has done a great job of getting us in the spirit today with the front of the bulletin that says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, um, Psalm 100. Um, and we're going to be talking today, you'll see on the inside of your bulletin, um, the theme is the nature of our God. Um, we serve a powerful God who has created and is creating, yet chooses to come live among us. Um, Psalm 67 says, May the people praise you, O God. May all of the people praise you. It does not say just the musicians. It says let all the people praise. And today we praise with words and with song and with instrument. But most importantly, we bring to God our hearts. God is a spirit, infinite, eternal, and unchanging. He is a God of unchanging wisdom, wisdom so deep and expansive that is beyond our understanding. He is a holy God, unchangingly perfect. There is no trace of evil in his character. He is a just God. He is a good God, infinitely unchangingly kind and full of goodwill. Yes, he is a just God, unchangingly fair. He shows no partiality. He is a God of mercy, unchangingly compassionate, and a God of grace, inclined to forgive us of our sins, as we should forgive those who sin against us. He is a loving God, infinitely, unchangingly loving, with a love that is consistent, steadfast, and enduring. He is a glorious God, a God of greatness and splendor and majesty and worthy of our worship.
please, is number 64, Holy, Holy, Holy. We'll see, be singing verses 1 and 4. Would you stand as we sing? to 83 in your hymnal and a, a reading called the canticle of God's glory if you will read along with me <laughs> glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth Lord God heavenly King Almighty God and Father we worship you we give you thanks we praise you for your glory Lord Jesus Christ only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us, you are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you are the alone of the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen.
Is anybody good at people movement? <laughs> we could use it this morning, I think. come to our time of prayer and we have kind of a prayer uh, ritual uh, the way we do it is we do our petitions and uh, after the petitions then uh, I will pray and there will be a time of silence we'll pray the Lord's Prayer together we were uh, on Wednesday afternoon in a uh, in a reunion group for Emmaus and I was reminded by Ann Geeson that uh, you know, a, a devotional that said, Lord, hear our prayers. We haven't said that in quite a while, but I would like after the petitions just to be reminded and, and let us do that. I'm going to begin with uh, Joyce Gay, and she is taking treatments for her cancer. She is, uh, I think, in coming with her daughter, and uh, that's the latest I know there. Lord, hear our prayers. Father, we come together as your church. On this day, we come together in anticipation because we love music. We love singing. We thank you that Flo has put together a music uh, a program and that the choir has worked on this and that we all get to participate and sing and be part of that music. Lord, you do hear our prayers. You do hear uh, the praise of birthday and people that love and come together. You hear all the medical kinds of things that are taking place. And, and Lord, and I, I say this too often, in an aging congregation, we, we do have more and more uh, diagnoses and, and, and medical things. And, Lord, you hear that and attend to that and, and are part of all of that. We are so grateful for improvement in the life of a little baby. That's what really touches our heart. You do hear all of these prayers. And then we lift up that prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Oh, every once in a while you will see quilts on the altar and it means that someone has dedicated. There are two quilts. I have one sheet of paper, so somebody's going to have to help me with this. Uh, one of the quilts is for Jimmy Harrison and the sponsor is Loretta. And so if both of you will come and talk to us about Jimmy Harrison. Well, let's, let's pray, and, and how we do this is we reach our hand forward. We pray. Uh, at the end of the service, there will be opportunity. You'll see these, and you can tie a knot. Father, we lift up these two concerns, these two people that are uh, very dear to Loretta and, and Robert. And, and, and so, Father, we just pray that uh, this will be part of their healing and, and part of their encouragement. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It's like this, logistics are hard getting around, but we're going to ask the uh, ushers to come and we will receive our tithes and our offerings. Lord, one of your great gifts to the church is the gift of music. Uh, it came from you. It was inspired by you. We received that with all the other gifts. In gratitude, we give back to you. In Jesus' name, amen.
joyful, joyful, we adore thee. The author of this hymn, Henry Jackson Van Dyke, was born in Pennsylvania in 1852. And he later became a preacher. And in 1907, he was asked to preach at Williams College in Massachusetts. And so um, it was the breakfast before he was supposed to preach. And he found the president of the college um, during breakfast. And he gave him a piece of paper. And on that paper, it said, I wrote this hymn. And it has to be sung to the tune of Beethoven's Hymn of Joy, or Ode to Joy, as we call it. And so the president of the college obliged him. And when um, Van Dyke was later asked about the hymn, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee, he said these words, and I thought they were pretty awesome words. He said, um, these verses are simple expressions of common Christian feelings and desires in this present time. And I think it applies to today as well. Hymns of today that may be sung together by people who know the thought of the age and are not afraid that any truth of science will destroy religion or any revolution on earth overthrow the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, this is a hymn of trust and joy and hope. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee. To, uh, to stand for that. And, and before we do, this is uh, Psalm 8 on page uh, 743. And uh, your pastor reads things beside the Bible. And around the time of the anniversary of the lunar landing, I read a book about that, uh, that journey. Uh, and it seems that they had in their spacecraft a Bible, and they were trying to figure out what is it we're going to say when we arrive in the moon. The consideration was Psalm 8 because it does talk about the heavens and the stars. So just know that this was thought about as, as they were making a lunar landing. Uh, let's read together. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Your glory is chanted above the heavens by the mouth of babes and infants. You have set up a defense against your foes to steal the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of them, and mortals that you care for them? Yet you have made them little less than God, and crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands, and have put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beast of the field the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Amen. Now you may be seated.
to join my daddy in the choir, but no one his way beat me to it, much younger. <laughs> what a, what a treat. In 1885, a young Swedish minister penned these words. When I the world consider, which thou hast made by thine almighty word, and how the web of life thou wisdom guideth, and all creation feedeth at thy board, then doth my soul burst forth in song and praise, O great God, O oh, great God, and the poem he called, O oh, Still Good, O oh, Mighty God. The poem was later forgotten. It was rediscovered and set to a Swedish tune. It never became popular. Until years later, an Englishman heard it in Russia and was so moved by the words of the song that he decided to expand the words, adjust them a little bit, and in later years, in fact, it was 1954, a pamphlet was given to George Beverly Shea during one of the Billy Graham Crusades. He hummed it to himself and later that year decided that he would show it to the Crusade Committee. And the following year, in Toronto, he sang it and introduced it for the first time. In New York Crusade of 1957, it was sung by Beverly Shea 99 times, with the choir joining in in the majestic frame. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. And would you stand and turn to page 77 and sing the first verse only of how great thou art. And if you can hit that high note at the end, hit it. Stand for
that God goes with us wherever we go. Um, we'll stand and sing the first verse only of God be with you till we meet again. going to give the benediction and a reminder that we will hear testimony from Becca tonight and we eat we do that very well and uh, so please please come back tonight for, for the things 5 30 5 30 uh, let's pray father we thank you for the gift of music we thank you for those who direct and those who sing and for those who just enter in with a joyful noise it is our way of praise it is a wonderful thing that you created, and we are glad that we did it. In Jesus' name, amen.